Hello, this is Vitual Suggest Noob learning and having fun with chess. Against the Vienna game, about 4% of the time, black will respond with the Shurilev counter gambit. That's bishop b4. So that's what happened in this game. I start with Vienna, e4, e5, knight c3, and then the opponent played a bishop to b4, otherwise known as the Shurilev counter gambit. Now the Shurilev counter gambit is not good, and white in this position has a number of possible moves. So this makes it automatically good for white, we've got a lot of options. Now thematically what we can do is immediately attack that bishop, so with, uh, with a3, or we can attack the bishop with the knight, with knight to d5, attacking the bishop there. Or we can ignore the bishop and look, look uh, and say, if we have an opportunity to take the full center with pawns, that's what we should do. And so we can just simply play d4. We can also ignore the bishop by just developing our other knight. That's perfectly good too. And there's also the tricky move, the wayward queen, queen to h5. All those moves are potentially okay, and every single one of these moves, white retains a uh, advantage in the opening. However, the move that I recommend playing, and that I really like playing, is what I've described before as the giraffish counter to the Shurilev counter gambit, and that is playing the queen to the giraffe attack square, queen to g4. Uh, and the idea of queen to g4 is that because the bishop has moved out, it's no, no longer defending the g7 square, and we're going to attack it right away. Now, this position is technically fine for black. It's uh, 0, 0, 0. However, it's got the best win ratio according to the Lee Chess Community Database. Uh, the win ratio here is about 52% for black versus 42% for white. The best possible option at sort of lower rated, uh, lower rated games. Black will probably not expect it. This is the 10th most common move in, uh, in the Shurilev. 1% of the time, black almost certainly will never see it. So let's see how this game proceeds. So this is a real threat. Now my opponent decided to develop their knight. Uh, I should take, however, when you take here, black can move their rook to a g8, and the queen is forced to the h6 square. Now, I know from um, previous games that this is apparently fine. I just don't particularly like my queen being forced in that way. So I decided to actually retreat my queen to uh, g3. Now Stockfish doesn't quite like this as much and says that black is ahead, minus 1.2. However, there's a lot of potential trickiness here uh, as well. So I, I quite like this potential move, which is very thematic in the giraffe attack. They developed their other knight, and you can see that was potentially a mistake because they haven't addressed the problem of g7. I now bring my knight forward, attacking, attacking, what are they going to do? And of course, potentially, uh, you know, potentially I'm inviting a trade. Now black, he decides to say, oh, look, looks like that's free and having an attack on the queen, but you can see it's a mistake. It's quite a bad mistake. Here uh, at high depth is worse than that. It's about plus five because black has again forgotten about g7. So I take it's a good move here, and now black no longer has that move because the knight is no longer in this position where they can force the queen onto h6. So they make the best move, which is to pull the knight, uh, sorry, pull the rook, sorry, right up against the king. I now get a bit greedy, take that bishop, so that wasn't the best move. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I give up most of my advantage. I'm actually still ahead here uh, at high depth, about plus 0.7. They take. Uh, and you know what I see here is they've got a potential fork here, and so I decide to first give a check. Uh, they you know block with queen, but now I can give a check again with trade queens. King is now forced forward, so this is a pretty big concession because their king is now uh, stuck in the center of the board. 
Seeing this problem, I decided to bring uh, my bishop here to defend. Stockfish apparently was not afraid here. Uh, they didn't like this move. This brings us back to close to equality. They thought directly attacking the knight was best, but I, I, I really didn't like did really didn't like that. Now black should have just taken. They wanted to keep that option, and now I'm a little bit ahead again. This is a very difficult position to maneuver uh, for black. So here, of course, they've hung that pawn. So I take, and of course, I'm still defending that square. They move their rook another time. I bring my uh, bring my bishop back. Uh, they try to attack. That's fine. I decide to take. Now Stockfish didn't like this move. They thought that it was more forcing for me to play uh, a three because of course if they take then I take their knight uh, and that chains to another attack on the other knight. Uh, but you know that's okay. Black here should now take. They should take but they make a mistake because what they do is they always were looking at that fork. They take instead. Um, now I can move my king across and they take my rook and you think, haven't I just lost a rook? But the thing is, this knight is trapped. It cannot come back out, okay? That rook wasn't really contributing to the position before. Well, that was one of black's most active pieces. So in fact, uh, in reality, dynamically, my loss isn't felt, but the fact that their knight is now in the corner will be felt by black. More than that, if they straight up take, they just win a full piece. So they win three points of material, while here they win five, but I will be eventually able to capture that knight again, which means they actually only get two points of material. Um, so this, they should have actually taken my bishop rather than let my bishop escape, which is what I've done now. King, that's fine. Defend that, uh, defend that bishop. That's kind of a non-move. I now attack their knight. They move to the wrong place because here I've got a very, very lovely skewer of the king on their rook. So skewer. Now, again, I don't really like that. So first things first, let's get rid of that knight. Uh, and here, black actually makes another incorrect move. They play a very human move. So rook to... Uh, rook to uh, d8, uh, getting out of that attack, but you can see that wasn't the best move. Why? Because um, I can now move my bishop out of the way. Now instead, they should have just taken, that's three points of material. If I take that rook back, they can capture back. So they could capture two of my bishops for the cost of, uh, for the cost of one rook, which is kind of a bargain. I suppose in a certain sense they're losing anyway, so I can certainly understand that. They move that, that face, I move my bishop out of the way, they now try to evacuate that knight, but you know, it doesn't work because it gets taken by the pawn, maybe they didn't see that, and at this point black opts to resign. Good game, <laughs> GG. My big takeaway from this game is to play Queen G4, the giraffish queen, against the Shurilev Count Gambit. You get some absolutely fantastic attacking tactics out of those lines. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.